is Nora West Allen, and I'm the fastest woman alive. When I was a child, my father disappeared in something impossible. Then I grew up and became the impossible. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Flash Episode 1 video. They swung for the fences with their references, so there's a crazy number of Easter eggs. So we'll do Top 10 WTF and I'll try to keep the video from going too long, just because there's so much we need to talk about. Because they did the Flash Ring, of course there's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Flash-related comment on the video. Starting with number 10, we get Nora's intro narration where we would normally get the Barry intro. And if you've ever watched My Hero Academia, it's a little bit like Deku doing his opening narration. This is the story of how I became the greatest hero in the world. Even though Nora is a Flash, she says that she's not that good. She doesn't have all the skills that Barry has, so she's aspiring to be better. Number nine, Nora initially says that her big quote unquote mistake was helping Barry blow up the satellite. Suddenly I can't go home. But the thing about that is, is that later she admits to lying about that, so even if it was one of her big mistakes, I think that there's something else going on, or they're just using it as a red herring. There are a lot of other things that they'll do on accident that will lead to Cicada beating them in the future when he shouldn't have in the original timeline. That was why Wally had that big explainer at the end of the episode where he said there are fixed moments in time that you can't change, and then there are some moments that are okay to change. So just remember that, they're going to keep referencing messing up the timeline for the first couple of episodes, I'm sure, mostly for comedy, like please don't give us spoilers about what's going to happen. They make a bunch of time travel references, stepping on a butterfly is a reference to the story A Sound of Thunder, Marty McFly, Back to the Future, Terminator 2, but they go to great lengths to let you know that Nora is who she says she is. She has both Barry and Iris's DNA, and they spent a couple of conversations between her and Barry, between her and Iris, about what it means for her to be there and why she came back and why it's so important that she get to meet her father. So I think that's their way of killing all the Nora is lying about who she is theories. Like she's not the fanboy younger version of Reverse Flash pretending to be Nora. Number eight, Barry gets reinstated as a CSI, letting you know that he's going to be doing a lot more Sherlocking. That's why Captain Singh told him there's a backlog of cases, meaning that he's going to be buried in work for most of the, at least the first half of the season, maybe the back half too. Nora speeds in and gives you more of her backstory. I'm a CSI just like you. I went to the same school. Like, they just wanted to let you know that she's almost exactly like her father. She idealizes him. They finish each other's sentences. They have the joke about the cookie dough. And you start to get the over-eager Nora. Like, she rushes and grabs his season one suit from Cisco's closet in an instant. Fan favorite OG Flash suit, which they then, you know, pay off when he's helping save the guards from Gridlock. Another fun moment, too, is Nora saying that she has a 5.6 GPA when 4.0 is supposed to be perfect inside the United States. Even if she's really naive and she's making a lot of mistakes, she's kind of like Jesse Quicken that she's crazy smart, but not necessarily the best speedster that they can be yet. Number seven, the big Flash Museum name drop. So this is just Nora explaining how she learned all about the Flash. I studied everything about your history. Fun fact too, this is almost exactly like the Reverse Flash's backstory. He was an expert on all things Flash in the Speed Force. He was even curator of the Flash Museum further in the future. So remember, Nora is from about 30 years in the future. Reverse Flash is still from hundreds of years in the future. So even though there are a lot of Reverse Flash Easter eggs buried in there, they still want to let you know that Nora is Nora. Nora named Rob Lightning Lad, who's a member of the Legion of Superheroes from way further in the future, so I'm assuming that he time traveled back and that's when he met Nora. But they use all that awkward coffee talk to sort of set up the ongoing drama between her and Iris. Oh yeah, you know, mom's off doing her own thing in the future. Yeah, she's doing fine. The writers didn't say what it was that was so awkward between them and why Nora isn't so hot on her, but they did say that they would resolve that within the first couple of episodes, so it's not like it's going to stretch across the entire season. The shui slang term that she keeps using is them doing the Bart Allen thing where he just says crash the mode all the time. So most of you probably picked up that the energy with which she entered the frame and she was introducing herself to everyone was very much like Bart Allen, especially on Young Justice. So it's sort of their way of doing the Bart Allen character without actually doing Bart Allen. So like she name drops all those characters from the future like Ryan Choi. She didn't say anything about Bart Allen or having a brother, so it's just them leaving themselves room if they want to do those characters later. They could change the timeline this season, and then by the end of the season, it turns out she does have a twin brother in the future. So they could get to Tornado Twins in a roundabout way, but original Nora is an only child. 
Number six, though, the negative tachyons, it felt like this was their reference to the negative speed force, even though that's not exactly how the negative speed force works. The negative speed force was something that was originally created by the reverse flash, but then later comics sort of retconned that a little bit, so I think they're just winking at that from behind the camera without necessarily pinning themselves down. So I've always wondered if they were going to use that as a concept. Number five, we get the big bomb from the future newspaper. Barry asks Nora, she explains what happens to him. Not necessarily how he dies, but that he never comes back. So this is right out of Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comics. So what happens is, is Barry turns into pure speed force energy and doesn't rematerialize until Flash Rebirth. But like Nora says, see, this is actually really accurate. He never comes back in the future. That's because when he came back, he came back in the past. Now, there have been a bunch of retcons. Originally, what happened is, is when he died in this crisis moment, he turned into the lightning bolt that gave him his speed force powers. So his life became this loop. And it was Wally West who was the first person to encounter his children, the Tornado Twins, when he became the main version of the Flash. They actually mistook him for their father. Are you our dad? No, I'm Wally West. I'm the other Flash. The way Nora explains it, she was born a couple years, quote unquote, before this crisis event. So that's the writers also saying that we're not going to tell you exactly when she's born so that you don't know when we're going to get Iris pregnant and they're going to have that baby. So maybe sometime in the next couple of seasons, they've teased it. Who knows what they're going to do with that? Number four, Nora gives him the Flash costume ring. It looks exactly like the effect in the comic book does. It turns out it was made by Ryan Choi, who is the second version of the Atom in the comics. He became the Atom after Ray Palmer disappeared after Identity Crisis because he was so grief stricken. So who knows, maybe we'll get Ryan Choi on one of the TV shows in the next couple of seasons. I would assume that they would do that character either on Flash or on Legends of Tomorrow because Ray Palmer is on Legends of Tomorrow. But number three, they phase the plane. It's right out of the beginning of the New 52 Flash comic book title. They phase all the people out of the plane and crash it right in the bay. It's totally cool. It looked like it was right off of the page. And Barry gives her the reverse Flash Harrison Wells speech from season one. Exactly. They even spliced footage in from season one. So it's sort of their way of referencing season one energy. They want to get back to the tone of season one, the balance of humor and drama, and give the energy of Barry being really excited about stuff because he's so excited because his daughter is here. Wally comes back explaining the rules of time travel, like there are some things that you can mess with. Like I said, that's the key to getting Tornado Twins, you know, messing with the timeline to get even more comic booky stuff down the road. But he goes off, he's going to go find himself. I think he's appearing in at least three episodes this year. But Wally isn't on Legends anymore, so he's effectively leaving all the TV shows. Number two, Ralph comes in, makes a joke about the continuity error from season one. Ralph Dibney died in the particle accelerator explosion. I still get a lot of questions about that. It's more of a continuity error, but the way the writers play it off in this joke is that they blame Flashpoint. There could be an alternate timeline where I died in the particle accelerator explosion. So that's their way of explaining that Ralph Dibney season one name drop for all you asking about that. The bigger reveal, though, is, is that Caitlin's father faked his death, and the person that signed the death certificate is actually Icicle from the comics. The person that Ralph says signed the death certificate is Jor Manquette. That's the first version of Icicle from the comics, meaning they're kind of confirming that that's who Caitlin's father is going to be this season, and he'll be the key to bringing Killer Frost back out. Number one, of course, was that big WTF with Cicada at the end where he kills all the metas. You don't see how he does it, but they have some cool special effects with his Speed Force dagger. And the way it's glowing just seems like dark matter lightning, so I'm sure they'll have some fun way of explaining how it's capable of killing metas and taking away their powers. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite moment from the episode. And I almost forgot, when Nora joked about King Shark fighting Grodd, they actually are going to do that later this season in an episode. I don't know which number it's supposed to be, but it might be the second half of the season. What'll happen is, is I'll do a trailer video for episode two tomorrow morning. Leave all your requests in the comments below. I'm sure everybody has a thousand questions, so I'll do bonus videos for whatever you guys want. I'll name the giveaway winner when I post that next video. Click here for that new Venom Carnage trailer and click here to rewatch the Flash season five trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.